Hello everyone and welcome to Outside, the series of course, where we go outside zombies maps such as this one here on our play today. I am so excited to see what's going on outside transit and if you are too, leave a like on the video and subscribe of course if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's get into this. So for Black Ops 2, I'm using Plutonium, which of course the link is down in the description if you got a PC copy and you want to download it yourself. Uh, but I can go ahead, press 1 and go into my personal menu, turn on both God Mode as well as... No clip, and we're ready to rock and roll, baby. All right, so I got rid of the zombies, and there's a few things to check out here right in the spawn of transit. We got a bathroom right here. Oh, God. Yeah, so it's definitely going to take a little bit getting used to this new mod menu. With the no clip is a little bit quicker. But it looks like this bathroom, right, there's a nice little spawn area right here for zombies. They can come out around the corner and get you on round one, but it doesn't seem like there's anything too crazy. I mean, you can see right through the wall. That's nice. There's the bus. And we also have this window over here, so let's go ahead and check it out real quick. If I can, there we go. Got a little desk here, but I don't think there's anything I don't think there's anything crazy going on there. But yeah, just a nice little spawn room again over here in the corner. The zombies to come out and around. There is a door here, and I'm kind of interested just to just to see. Uh is there a door on the other side? And there is. Okay. Now, of course, transit is a very unique map, and by that I mean when we come outside this window here. We really have a ton to explore, and we're going to get to it all, but before we do, there's all this fog we got to deal with. Now, I think it would be more entertaining to turn off the fog before we start taking a look around the map, but before the fog is all gone, I would kind of like to take a look at what the whole map looks like with fog first. And a cool thing about transit is the way the map works. So if we go high enough here, we can kind of take a look. We can see the diner's loaded in, but everything else around us is not. This is, of course, because this game came out a long, long time ago in 2012, and, well, it ran on Xbox 360s. And to run on an Xbox 360, you needed to be able to do some memory management, well, do things like this, where there's only a very small section of the map loaded in, and the entire rest of the map is not. So here's a better look at what the map is supposed to look like with everything loaded in. Beh below us is the bus station. Of course, there's the tunnel all the way to the diner over there, and going on past the power station and town, and then the bridge back over to the bus station. I thought that'd be just a cool thing to look at before we turn off the fog, which I'm gonna do right now. In Plutonium, there is a command R underscore fog zero, which will turn off the fog, and oh my god, this map looks so different. The second we do that, we can easily see way more of what's going on with transit, so we can very well see diner over there, and farm, power, town, and, of course, where we're going to start, which is the bus station. All right, now that the fog is off, let's check out some things out back behind the bus station. We have, obviously, quite a few different broken-down cars. we got some lava, which doesn't seem to actually work, unfortunately. We fall through the map here. This is essentially how far collision with the ground goes. It just ends right at where this lava starts, which is unfortunate. But there is this Easter egg chilling right in front of us, which we can see very easily now without the fog. Obviously, this is supposed to be a reference to Shrek, right? which is quite cool. Uh, let's go ahead and go inside of it just to see if there's anything interesting about its construction. Doesn't look like it, right? It's just a it's just a shack, just an outhouse made of wood, man. There's nothing too crazy about that, but I always thought this was a super cool Easter egg just chilling out here. But let's keep on going. There's plenty to see over there, but we're going to go this way first. So just outside this door, right, we have a trash can and not a ton going on. But here's the barrier of the map right here. And the roadway itself continues for quite a bit. And, and there's also this little shack outside. We should probably check it out too, huh? Is there anything going on with it? I, I doubt it. But it does actually have collision, which is interesting. Uh, so if I go inside of it, it looks like it's just one massive barrier. Wow, that's a high barrier, dude. That is insane. Why is it so high, dude? Why? Yeah, very strange. Not entirely sure why that's so high. But yeah, we can see that the roadway does indeed end. And then back over on this side of the bus station, of course, this is where we have another barrier to go back inside the map, right, in that little nav card location over there. Uh, but it's interesting to see just how far the lava goes here. So there's just a massive, massive amount of lava and rock here. And just outside the map, there's this, which is quite strange, actually. It almost looks like a roadway, but it's like of ash. It actually lines up pretty much perfect with that road right there. Not sure why it's here, but it's kind of cool to see. And, of course, on top of the actual bus station itself, 
we can see right through the roof, right? There's not actually any like rendered textures really for most of the roof here. Maybe it's just like little parts of it like that right there. And there's some AC stuff going on on top, but, but that's really about it up here. Transit had to work really hard to try and make sure that there wasn't anything loaded in at any time that it didn't need to be in order to make this map work. But Transit was massive for 2012, so we gotta give it credit where credit's due. And there's a few things to check out here. So we got the old Shiske, Shelke? I don't know. We got the garage here, let's check it out. Let's go ahead and hop on through this window and see what's going on inside of it. So interestingly enough, we do have actually quite a modeled interior, to be honest with you. We even have like a workbench. And interestingly enough, we can just walk right through the, the front counter here, which is kind of cool too. And then inside the actual garage part, oh my god, it's very dark. I cranked up the brightness for you guys, so hopefully you can see at least a little bit. It's quite dark in here, and there's not a ton to look at, but it's pretty interesting to see how much of this is modeled, because you can't see really much of this at all, but it is actually loaded in, so I guess maybe that, maybe that thing I just said about transit isn't completely true about everything, but it is pretty cool to see. And now let's check out what's going on with this building. So it's got a door open out back, and of course, I think that's where zombies come from to get through this window. Right, so there's this little door right here, just a nice big old dark space for zombies to spawn in. There's nothing really to see in there. But outside the back here, well, there's a barrier, which is interesting. So I can't actually go that way, so let's just go ahead and no clip on past it. I don't think there's anything too crazy to check out. Anything going on with any of these cars? Doesn't really look like it. Where does, where does the map end? Oh my god, I can climb the mountain. Oh, there we go. And I think the last thing to check out for the bus station is the water tower right here which unfortunately we cannot stand on it, but we can go inside of it at least and just take a look at it. Just appreciate the artwork and oh my, look at that little thing right there. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the spawn area. So let's go ahead and follow the path of the bus, which is I think what we're gonna do. So we'll end it with town essentially. Let's go around the map. There's this building right here that's outside the map. We don't normally really see much of with the fog being here. Let's just take a look at it. Nothing going on inside of it as to be expected, but it's pretty cool. And there's also a ton of area back here. We can actually see how far this this goes, which is not very far at all. You know, it's really crazy how much that fog hides, man, because you can see right to the edge of the map, there's all kinds of, of stuff that doesn't really look right. Yeah, it's, it's very obvious that the devs back in 2012 were like, well, I guess maybe probably 2011, huh? But they were like, hey, we can't, we can't make this look good. These consoles are limited, so let's just throw fog in and we'll make it work that way. Yeah, following along, right? We got we got a car chilling here. Of course, lava, more cars and stuff that you don't normally get to see very well. And actually, it's kind of cool to see that the lava here doesn't actually affect the player like the lava does inside the map. So I'm, I'm obviously that isn't associated with the texture, but it's associated with some kind of, I don't know, some kind of hitbox, I guess. This guy, unfortunately, really did not did not make it, did he? And before we go into the tunnel, I just kind of want to take a look at the entrance of the tunnel here. So there's like this little like box area, right? Up top, which actually does have collision, interestingly enough. Inside of it is nothing at all though. It looks like there might be a room, right, associated with it. But as you can see from the top even, there's just nothing going on there at all. And can we walk? No, we can't, okay. We can't walk on top of the tunnel, it looks like much at all, but we could, I mean, we could do this. All right, let's head on in to the tunnel. There's this area to the left we don't normally get to see. I mean, we just checked out over there, but I don't think there's anything too crazy going on in here. There's no like hidden stuff, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't really look like it, but it is pretty cool to see how far we can actually go. And there's this massive hole in the tunnel right here, which we can just check out from the outside. It actually, when you leave the tunnel, the entire tunnel unrenders. So that's it's quite interesting. We go back in and immediately it renders again. So that's Really strange how that works. Again, I'm assuming to, to try and save on resources, right, RAM and all that fun stuff. So I turned on zombie spawns here because I thought it'd be interesting to see if the denizens know how to get me here outside the map. I heard one spawn. I hear, where is it? Oh. Oh, it does know how to travel outside the map. So if I turn on invisibility here, can I get close to them? I just kind of want to take a look at the actual model of the denizen, but it looks like he keeps going in and coming out over and over again. Yeah, look at that thing, man. That is, uh, that is harrowing. <laughs> so its eyes are basically just massive, and everything else about it 
is tiny. It almost looks, it really does look like some kind of hybrid between a human and a monkey. And I think that's the storyline for the denizens, right? Although I could be completely wrong. I'm sure you guys know way more lore than I do. As you know, I'm a filthy casual, but I believe that's the that's the lore for these guys, right? There's some kind of hybrid between a human and a monkey that, that, that happens. Right, the whole Pentagon and Era 51 experimentation. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn off zombie spawns once again, because that's gonna get quite annoying as we go. And let's keep on keeping on, man. This tunnel looks so different, but we have this area right here to check out. So let's go ahead and go on inside of it. So there is a room with dead zombies. I think this is a this is a zombie spawn location, obviously, right? These are these are the dead zombies that just got killed by that nuke. Pretty cool to see. So that's where they spawn, right? And they come on through and hop on out the window right here. So that's cool. I'm guessing this is probably also another spawn location, so they can spawn on both sides. And as far as any details in the garage, doesn't look like there's much, although interestingly enough, there is barriers around this entire area right here, right? They don't want any of the zombies to get stuck, so there's a nice, clear path for them to follow. And over on this side, we have this window here going to this restricted area tunnel, which is kind of cool. We got this door that's mysteriously open. Uh, unfortunately, there's absolutely nothing to this room. There's literally a wall right behind the door, and the hallway itself leads nowhere whatsoever. But of course, right, zombie spawn locations here and here. And as we can see across the way here, we pretty much have the exact same thing for this window. There's this nice shelter sign that leads to nowhere, man. There's no hope. And I also wanted to check out this little area here where this truck breaks through the wall. So there is some out of map space here. Uh, it doesn't seem to go very far and oh my god, actually, it goes a lot farther than I thought it would. Yeah, it goes all the way to here. Look at this, dude. It's kind of crazy. Just extreme darkness. There's no detail to it past like right here. But what about the other side of the truck? So yeah, on this side of the truck, uh, it looks like the same kind of deal. Extreme darkness leads to nowhere. Uh, and there's not really any detail back here. So let's hop back inside the map, check out something else. So if we keep on keeping on here, of course, the bus route follows right here. But let's get outside the map, because why would we follow the bus route when we can walk out here? Uh, it seems like this is almost an exact repeat, uh, like texture-wise here with what's going on with this dirt and stuff as what was over there, right? And they just kind of scattered some, some vehicles in. If we go out the crack here, is it the same kind of deal? Yeah. So it just loads in and out, like literally as you pass that barrier, which is pretty strange to see. And if we keep on moving towards the diner. So yeah, we got this window right here on the right. There's not much going on with it, man. Interesting, there's a fence here actually, because I would have thought there wouldn't have been for zombie spawns, but I guess they spawn like right here probably instead. Or actually, right here, most likely. I mean, it definitely adds a lot of atmosphere, and and this this passes the no fog test, in my opinion. Like this looks really cool, while like the roof of the tunnel itself looks terrible without fog. It does not look like a, a, a tunnel. So it's quite interesting to see that there is detail in places like this, but there's not detail in that. And to the left here, there's this little outside the map area. It doesn't seem like there's anything interesting to going on here though. So let's just keep on keeping on and make our way to diner. We're almost there. So here is where the bus makes its turn. So to the left, of course, is diner. We can see by this massive smoke fog right there, that is the entrance to diner, essentially. Uh, but if the bus were to keep going straight, there is actually a highway here that leads off into the distance. It ends right there, as you can see, and of course we follow through it. Uh, but yeah, as far as collision with players, it seems like it ends right here. We can actually see the line in the sand right there, and it's very obvious where the texture changes. It doesn't seem to me like this would have actually led anywhere, so I don't think this is any bus route B kind of deal right here. It's just the highway continuing onward. It seems very deliberate that we aren't supposed to go that way. All right, walking into diner, there's quite a few things to take a look at here. So first of all, what is going on in the sky right now? I think I've glitched out the game somehow, so give me one second. Right, so the game is definitely glitched out. So if we come back here to spawn, as you can see, a whole bunch of things are not rendered in right now, so I don't know what I did, but the game doesn't know where I am. Ah, there we go, much better. There's the sign that we know. Yeah, I'm not sure why it did that, but I just restarted the game, and it looks like everything is loaded in fine now. And there's the bus! There should be quite a few things to check out in this area, so let's go ahead and hop into the diner. Start off in here. There's windows that lead out back, right? Which, let's go ahead and just hop on outside. We might as well. Screw it. Let's see what's going on out back here. There is actually a little room here, which is kind of strange, with actual 
actual doorways that lead to actual pathways. I'm guessing zombies spawn in them, right? Because there's this there's this invisible barrier right here. I'm guessing that's to separate the zombies, right? So zombies that spawn here will go to this window, and zombies that spawn here will go to this window over here. Kind of cool to see how that's done, though, to be honest with you. And, of course, well, the roof is should be fully modeled because, of course, you can get to the downer roof normally, right? That's where the gavel knuckles are. Sick. But I'm interested in the roof over here. Uh, is there anything modeled with this one? And it looks like it is, for the most part, until right here. So this area is just like the bus station where there is no textures at all for the roof. You can see right through it. Uh, but this looks fine. That makes sense. And if we go into this area, right, there's multiple windows that head out. And yeah, just like over there, right, there's an invisible barrier here to my right. You can see I'm bumping into. That's obviously to guide the zombies to this window. And it separates the zombies that spawn for this window over here. Now, we also have this shack, which normally you can get into using a turbine, but I'm going to hop on in anyway. Got the ladder, hell yeah. But it has this window right here that leads or looks out to the back, which... It's pretty interesting seeing that with no fog again. I feel like I'm gonna say that a lot, but let's hop on out the door and take a look. So we got some barriers around, I'm guessing again to guide zombies. We can, I think, can we get past them? Oh my God, we're completely enclosed here. There we go, all right, we made it out. Oh no, we made it out only to fall through the map. But interestingly enough, there is quite a bit of area here. There's a weird like down area, which seems like there should be water here, but there isn't. Instead, there's some rockage. And that's about it, man. This little shack here does have a barrier on top of it, and so does this building right here. Uh, I'm not sure why, I guess, to try and prevent some kind of glitch from people hopping from the diner? I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. This also provides a pretty cool perspective of the area, right? You can see the whole highway right there, and you can even see past the past the rocks and the, the white smoke over there, too. Kind of cool, man. You know, I never really realized how much space there is actually over here. Obviously, because of the denizens, it's not too useful. But there is a ton of space right here to train zombies. Like, if the denizens weren't here, it would be so much easier, man. So if we go, like, this way, for instance, look at all this space here, dude. It's all open. There's just tons of it. Being able to train zombies through this area, I mean, it would, it would be so much fun. But, I mean, I guess it would be also, at the same time, way too easy. All right, through the mist, through the fog, let's continue onward. Of course, normally you can walk all the way along this entire area here, which is cool, right? There's, there's tons of space over here that normally you don't really get to interact with. You can, in fact, even see a floating rock. Here's what it would look like with fog, but you can still clearly see that this area is not polished. All right, let's go ahead and pass the lava. Hot, 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 hot. And on the other side, we got a whole bunch of open space again. Let's just keep on following the pathway, man. And right here, we have our first intersection. So to the left is town, and forward is where the bus always goes towards power. This, I think, is bus route B. So my belief is that this was going to be a part of the bus route, that there was some way that you could switch it, and it would make this turn and go into town this way. But instead, due to time constraints, most likely, they scrapped that whole idea and just made it one whole circle around the map, which in my opinion made transit suck. Now hear me out. The only reason that transit is bad is the bus has one route and that's the entire gimmick of the map, right, is the bus. So if you're only doing one thing on the bus all the time, how is that fun? And second, the fog with the denizens. If the map had less fog, just like a little bit less fog, it could still have some fog, right? There needs to be fog up there, for instance. That makes sense. But does there need to be fog everywhere in front of you at all times? Like, surely if they had enough time, they wouldn't need this much fog. But unfortunately, that isn't the case, and we didn't get to experience transit to its full capability. Because I think this map really could have been amazing. It could have been revolutionary, and it just was cut short. So whether that's Activision's fault, whether it's Treyarch's fault, I don't know. But there's my little transit rant. I really wish this map was better than it was. And I think this would have been one of the very key components to making transit amazing. So we're gonna follow that pathway shortly, but before we do, I kinda wanna take a look at this church. I hear it ringing in the distance and it's drawing my attention. I'm not gonna lie. So let's take a look. So it does have a window here for zombies to come out of. Just kinda points more to this area was gonna be utilized more than it is. I mean, when do you ever 
run through here. I feel like the only people who do, right, are really good zombies players, which, not me. Uh, I barely ever use this area. I just use the teleporters in, in transit, and, and that's about it. Due to the fog, to be honest with you, most of the time, I just don't want to be in it. Like, it's just not fun to play, so I don't use this area whatsoever. But let's go ahead and check out the church, man. We can, so let's hop on through the window and see what's going on here. There's not much rendered, unfortunately, inside the church, but it does actually have a little box here for zombies to spawn. And if we go into the actual church itself, we can walk around, we can see the windows, and we can also see, the in the steeple here, it seems like there's some kind of ambient light that's, that's spawned in there to make it look extra creepy. Alright, that's enough for that area there. There's tons more to check out when we get to town, and we will. But I'm gonna take a sip of the coffee, because of course I have my coffee with me this morning. I hope wherever you are, whatever time you're watching this, you're enjoying yourself. Because I'm gonna say, honestly, I'm loving this. Now, transit, I wasn't a big fan of. I just made a big point of that. But, it is a really cool map. And being able to see it with no fog, the childhood in me, it's just, it's just, just loving this. And I hope you guys are too, and if you are, Leave a like on the video, it helps me out a ton. Comment down below, tell me what you feel about transit. If you guys really enjoy this content and you're looking to support me another way, you should see down below the video now, there is a join button and I have activated the YouTube memberships. If you do become a member and say there's something that I miss here on this transit video that you really wanted me to check out, you'll be able to request it to me and I will post it to the exclusive member only section. So essentially you can request specific things that you want me to see. I think this is probably the best way to do this. If you're giving me your hard-earned money, and believe me, I understand money right now, but if you're giving me that hard-earned money, I want the content that you get back out of it to be worth it for you. So if you have anything that you want to see, you'll be able to see it. And as time goes on, this members-only section will just expand further and further and with more and more exclusive content. So if you're one of the people who do click the join button, I salute to you, I thank you very much, but if you don't have the money to do it, don't do it. Please do not feel pressured into hitting this join button. It is not a make or break for my content. So membership or not, there's plenty of content coming your way. And it means a ton to see how much support that I have for this series. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, man. I love you guys. Oh, shit. All right, with that out of the way, let's continue on the pathway here towards power. Something I noticed here as we walk towards power, the entire color of the map changes. Look at that. It's gray. And here's the bus. Oh no, don't run me over now. Ted, 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 Ted. We yeah, the entire color of the map changes now, man. Like, so it's it's like bluish, purplish, and if we no clip back over here, everything turns more reddish. So kind of weird. I'm guessing it's associated, right? It's supposed to be associated with the areas of the map that have more lava, right? So there's probably more lava back there. And then obviously this area of the map, there's not much lava at all. And here we are to farm. I feel like this is the area of the map that I forget about the most. Although it was honestly one of my favorite survival maps. But there is lava here, so I guess what I just said isn't completely true. There is still actually a massive lava pool here, which is quite interesting. But I do think that has to do with the color. Because even when I come over here, look, it's more red. And then when I leave and go back towards here... It's more blue. So yeah, that color change definitely seems to be associated with the lava somehow. And just because I thought it was interesting, there's one of these tubes here that directs water flow, and interestingly enough, first of all, the lava here does have collision, and it does burn us, and also, this tube does indeed go all the way through to the other side, which, I don't know, I thought that was just kind of a cool fact. Although this side, look at that, it's just completely blocked up with texture. Before we go into farm, out this way, behind the, the fog layer of that, that smoke layer, I suppose. There's a big old mountain, but there's not much going on with it. We can walk on some of it, but as you see there, I, I think the end is like right about here. So you can walk on all this, but you can't walk on any of this up top. And up top, it just leads, well, to town, which we'll check out in a bit. All right, going into farm, there's quite a few things I want to look at. So first thing, let's just hop over this fence. Let's take a look at this little corral area, right? There's not too much going on here, but... Still really cool to see, in my opinion. I always thought it would have been really cool if this was opened, if this was, like, part of the actual map. It To me, it made no sense that it wasn't, right? Like, they could have just had this be a zombie spawn location, this little area here. Could have had this be a window and zombie spawn inside of there and come out at you. And, and I feel like it would have made way more sense than having windows like this. Like, what the f- What is this, man? Why did they- Why did they do this? This doesn't make any sense to me. It seems- It seems really stupid. To be real with you, I don't. I don't know. Some of the decisions they made for transit just blow my mind, man. I, I don't understand it. So going into the barn now, 
there should be a few things to check out in here. So out back, for one, we got a window, of course, and we have a tractor. But yeah, other than that, there's not really much going on out here. But to the right of the barn, we have this area, a bunch of, like, chicken coops and stuff, which is pretty cool to see. You don't really get to, get to look at these at all. And of course, also, there's this window here, and directly beyond it is a massive wheat field. I've always wondered whether this was somehow connected with the knocked wheat field, which is over there somewhere. Um, but obviously, as we can see here, there is, in fact, an entire barrier between the two. Uh, right, and over this hill, we can see the crop circle and the actual wheat field that has knocked. And over to the right, we can see it just extends towards this massive pool of lava, but nothing going on over here. Oh, something interesting I noted? This is in Russian. So yeah, not, not sure, not sure what's going on with that. And as far as inside these silos, this one has absolutely nothing at all, and this one has layers, interestingly enough. Yeah, definitely the weirdest detail about this area is that there's Russian text here on the side of this silo. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever, considering we're supposed to be in America, right? At least to the best of my knowledge, we're supposed to be in America. Maybe there's some lore that I don't know about, and you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments section. But, very strange. And if we keep on going here, past these silos, we have this little red shack outside the map which does have collision and does have somewhat of an interior to it, which is kind of cool to see, but no, no hidden secrets, nothing, nothing too insane. So continuing on into the house. Yeah, so there's a few things I want to check out, right? So it has multiple windows that lead to the outside of it. And just like this one here, there is actually like a little porch here, which is kind of nice. So the porch continues onward outside a whole big old blood stain, and it goes to a dark room. Yeah, there's not much at all to that room, but it's pretty cool to see. I'm guessing that's obviously where the zombies spawn, and then they come along and come get you. So this deck down below does actually continue all the way through this dark room, and there is actually a little bit of area right here that you can walk on. You know, with how massive the area is back here, and considering other areas of the map where that has not been the case, it really makes me think that farm was supposed to be a little bit bigger than it was. Because, like, why have all of this space here, and you can't even see any of it? And upstairs in the house, we have a few things to check out, so right out here on the balcony, just to see what's going on, we got a, we got a bucket from Zetsubo again. And another dark room to spawn zombies, but other than that, that's about it here. But there's also an attic as well, so let's go ahead and go up on the attic, see if there's anything interesting inside of it. It doesn't really look like it. Obviously, the ceiling here doesn't have any textures, so you can just see right through it. But cool to see nonetheless, here's the barrier, of course, on top. Really, really high. I can almost see my house from here. Well, I think that's about it for farms, so let's go ahead and hop on over the lava and make it to the wheat field. So something interesting to note here, the entire wheat field is never loaded in. So you load in more and more of the wheat the closer you get to it, and the further away you get from the other side, it loads out. But just to take a good look at what we got going on here in the wheat field, this, this crop circle kind of deal, it actually is two separate circles, right? So there's like this outside circle, then there's the inside circle, and it's got these connections, kind of like spokes of a wheel, right? And then obviously there's where the nav table is, below the old power line. And then as far as Noct goes, there's two separate entrances, as I'm sure most of you guys know. The one on the right here, which has a car in it, and the one on the left, of course. They connect together, and in the middle, we can go to Noct. And as far as Noct itself goes, there's a lot of differences with this area than the original Nocturne Toad. So in a normal round of transit, I believe the only reason to come here is for parts, right? Like this one right here. But there's nowhere else you can go other than this, you know, first room area of Noct, right? You can't go up the stairs or anything like that. So let's go ahead and check out what it looks like up here. And, yep, no textures at all for the roof. And in fact, there's also this massive hole here that normally isn't there at all. And interestingly enough, up top, this wall is just a solid wall. There's no door like there normally is in Noct. It's completely different. And right here is normally the help door. If we go on through it, there's just nothing here whatsoever. It's just a hollow area with nothing built. So yeah, all the real estate is there for Nocturne Toten, but it none of it None of it's made, it's just this one room. So it's very clear that they made this separate from the normal Nocturne Toten. And to make these windows look like actual windows, like they go somewhere, if we get close, we can see that they added, essentially, just like a little, like, two-inch area here to add some depth, and that is it. Just a solid flat wall texture behind that. Now, although there is no help room, there is no mystery box location, and there is no upstairs to this area, there is, however, a little area here where the deck is. We can actually walk on all this, which is kind of cool, and of course there is a door here that leads to nowhere. But yeah, the collision for even this area right here where there's no room below us seems to all be made, so 
Kind of strange. And as far as the stairs go, they do not work, unfortunately. Out back behind Noct, there seems to be like a destroyed highway. At least that's what it looks like to me. There's no collision with any of it. But from underneath, you can see that there is like an actual like pathway kind of deal. Uh, but up top, obviously, there's no real textures other than for this section right here. Uh, but, you know, it really doesn't look like a roadway. <laughs> I assume that's what this is, though. Uh, and in fact, if we were to think about how this would work, it would probably connect back to that highway way over there if, you know, you were to use some imagination. Well, I think that's all for Nocturne and Toten, so let's go ahead and continue onward towards power. So coming into the power area, the first thing that we cross is these train tracks right here, and I kind of want to just take a look at how far they go. So over here to the right, it looks like they go back into some rocks and then just end. And past the rocks, just, just in case, yeah, nowhere, unfortunately, just ends. And towards the other direction, these train tracks go all the way and cross the path again on the other side, which is quite interesting. However, past these two train carts right here, it just immediately ends <laughs> into nothing right here. It seems like the interior of the train carts themselves are all modeled. It looks like they're all exactly the same as well. From what I can see, they're all 24. There doesn't seem to be any other hidden details with them specifically, but we also have this area right here, which is like, I don't know, some kind of like fuel canister deal. I'm guessing like for the, for the trains, right? Probably. But it's pretty cool to see. It itself does not have any collision whatsoever. We can just fall right through it all. Uh, but the ground does around this area. So, you know, it provides a nice perspective. And as we walk into the power station, there should be quite a few things to check out. It's really weird how there's a bunch of fog this way because to me, right, that's the area that is kind of the coolest and you never get to see any of this stuff over here for the most part. What's it's that? really hard to see with fog. And before we go into the facility right there through the outhouse, there is some things I want to just check out around the outside. So out back, this is what it looks like. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's much detail over here. Uh, just a bunch of the same texture. Can we walk? How far can we walk? Yeah, so interestingly enough, it seems like we can walk above this entire facility, which is kind of cool. And as far as this building goes, can we walk on it? We can. Yeah, but same kind of deal. There's no roof texture here. So let's go ahead and hop into the facility and, and see what we got to check out. So if I don't open the door and instead I no clip through the outhouse, does that change anything? Yeah, we can't we can't pick up any of the actual power parts themselves, unfortunately. So we do have to open that door. Yeah, this is kind of funny actually. So you can get the, the flush sound to happen over and over again if you just no clip up and then drop down, no clip up and then drop down. It doesn't seem, oh God, I'm stuck. Yeah, it doesn't seem to care which direction you go. Anytime you pass this threshold, that sound plays, which is kind of funny to see. Uh, first thing I want to check out, is there anything behind this door? I'd assume not. Nope. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. So what about this window right here? Let's go ahead and hop on in. And yeah, so there's just like a little spawn area for the zombies and they come on around the corner, but that's about it. There's not nothing too interesting here. It's radioactive, radioactive. And another thing I want to check out is right past here, there's this room, and I want to see where it leads. It looks like, actually, it has quite a bit here, which is quite surprising. So again, this is another area for zombies to spawn as far as I, I know, right? So zombies can spawn back in this little room right here. Quite cool to see how far it goes, actually. And they can come through and, and come get you and hop over this wall right here. I also kind of want to see below us, right? So how far does this go down? Man, it's really bright down here, so I'm sorry for the eyes, but this is very reminiscent of, like, below a teleporter. Most of the teleporters say, like, the one on Moon that we saw it has a massive area down beneath it, and this, this kind of gives that same kind of vibe. And in the middle here, there's nothing at all. Just a nothingness texture, and we cannot walk on any of it, unfortunately. We just fall right on through. But take a look at that. Can you see them? So as it turns out, inside this machine, if we take a look, the Avogadro is here the entire time. And interestingly enough, I can knife him, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering, can I kill this guy while he's just chilling in here? Yeah, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to be possible to kill this guy. I've been, I've been at it here for a little while. It really doesn't seem like I'm doing any damage to him, but using this ray gun here, we can take a look. It gives us, it gives us a better look at what he actually looks like. It kind of like fades his coloring. And yeah, he's just like a bunch of, he's, he's essentially just the nervous system of the human body, and then that's it. Like, even down there on his feet, like, he has no feet, he's just got nerves. So yeah, pretty crazy, pretty crazy character in Zombies. There's nothing really else like him. Uh, I do have EMPs, so let me see, do EMPs affect him while he's in here? 
I suppose another problem here is I might be missing, and I, I don't know if there's an easier way to get it in there, but that definitely hit him there, and it didn't seem to have the normal effect that it does. It seems like he's just locked in this this animation here, where it kind of seems like he's in absolute agony. I smell a plan. And if we go ahead and we turn on the power, let's get a close-up look at what happens here. So obviously all this electricity starts flowing, Avogadro itself, he raises up, so actually this entire capsule that he's in raises up out of the center. His animation keeps on going, so it's the same animation that you normally see when you turn on the power, and eventually, he's gone. And here's what it looks like after the power is on. So right, this thing is all raised up, and inside, there's just an empty area here where that normally is. That's pretty cool, man. I never expected that. And we do have a few windows here to check out, so let's go ahead and check them out as well. Uh, they look exactly the same as the other ones. Uh, so there's that one, and then also this one here. Oh, this one's quite different, actually. Yeah, so this one's like a little tunnel, and in fact, oh my god, look at this. So it actually connects through stairway up to this window here. So pretty cool. So the zombies do have a way to get to you uh, as you go on up. Now, what about this area here? So below us, obviously, there is a pathway that you can normally walk on, right? You can normally walk on all this. There's a part here that you need to get. Well, I suppose need is a relative term, because, I mean, I don't know how many people actually use that thing. But there's also a whole bunch of area back there that you can't normally get to. So let me just go ahead and hop on. Oh my god. Yeah, so there is no collision with any of this whatsoever. But just to get an up-close look, we got a couple boxes, nothing going on inside of them. And behind the Transformers, there doesn't seem to be anything really hiding here, except a lone brick. And let's go ahead and check out what's going on down here as well. So it seems like this goes down all the way, and then at the bottom, this is what it looks like. So there's just like a little hole here with a whole bunch of magma, and below it is nothing. Yeah, we can see power though, that's kind of cool. The lava that flows into this hole comes out of these two holes in the wall, and I just kind of wanted to check out those. It seems like the texture just stops, it cuts off right where you can't see it anymore. But it's kind of cool to see that there's, there is indeed like a little bit of a space here for this one. And for this one over here, it's exactly the same kind of deal. Something that's kind of interesting to note is you can walk down here too. There is collision, which I guess makes sense, right? So if you do somehow survive long enough, they put some collision down here so it seems like you actually hit something. Man, this perspective, it's quite hellish, isn't it? Lord, forgive me, I have sinned. Oh... And heading over here, we got this window to check out. There's a little spawn area for zombies right here around the corner, it looks like. Whole bunch of blood on the wall, which kind of looks weird right there. I don't know, there's something something weird about that texture. But yeah, not much to see. It doesn't really lead anywhere. Just, uh, just adds <laughs> quite the interesting perspective on what's going on down there, I suppose. Out back behind the power station, there's just a massive mountain and some power lines in the distance as well, like this one over here. Yeah, there's, there's not much to check out out here. It's just a bunch of barren landscape, of course, and charred trees. Something that I thought was interesting about this area that I wanted to point out is the way the lighting works. So there's, like, these weird areas where they added some, like, orange lighting, right? So from one side, you can't see it, and from the other side, you can. So it kind of makes this, like, weird, like, box effect. If you get right in line with it, you can see. I'm not entirely sure why they did it like this, but kind of cool. It is also over here as well. This is extremely pronounced, as you can see. It, it creates a line in the sand where there's light on one side and no light on the other one. All right, I think that's it for power, so let's keep on keeping on down the road. So up the road over here to the right, there is a whole bunch of area that normally is, of course, filled with fog, so training zombies here would be very hard to do, getting constantly attacked by denizens and not being able to see. But it does lead to the shack, of course. The shack in the woods with the Bowie knife. Now, of course, all of this is technically inside the map. You can see this normally, but without fog, it's a little bit easier. They got all these skulls for the denizens. I'm assuming these skulls, I mean, as you can see, if you look at them, they're kind of like a hybrid between a human and a monkey. They kind of look, they look very monkey-like. Very Neanderthal, in fact, if I'm going to be honest with you. It's kind of what they look like. And inside of the chimney, it doesn't go up very far. It seems to end just right there. Uh, but there is a whole bunch of these skulls burning, which, I mean, makes no sense whatsoever. Obviously, skulls are not flammable. Interestingly enough, below the cabin, there is actually quite a bit of area here, which is kind of cool to see. I suppose it makes sense, considering you can you can see through it right here, a crack in the floor. But man, this area is really extensive. Like, it's massive, dude. Without the fog here, it, it really puts in perspective what's going on. 
and there's these like little like clumps of rocks and stuff. To me, it makes me feel like this area is like a minefield of denizens, right? Like this is like the areas where the denizens pop out and whoever lived in this shack just hunted them all and killed as many as he could. Or she could, I suppose. I have no idea who actually lived here. I'm sure there's some lore behind that. Again, I don't know it. So let me know down in the comment section below if you do. And up top, it seems like this entire roof and building itself has collision and it seems to work exactly like you think it would. There's no extra barriers except the one that faces out back here so you can't fall off the backside. But yeah, like even, even that hole there, there's no barrier in any of that. Man, I know I keep saying this, but it's just insane what this place looks like with no fog. There's so much space here, dude. It would have made this map way too easy if, if you could just train zombies here, but man, would it have been fun. And behind the old shack, of course, we got a big old mountain here with a bunch of rocks on it. And over there is the bus station. So just to put in perspective of where we are. Well, let's go ahead and continue along this pathway. Some things to note. Right? With no fog, you can tell that there's an obvious texture problem going on right there that does not look right at all. Just kind of points towards how unfinished transit really is outside the map. So there's quite a few things to check out here, and I think the way I'm going to do this is clockwise. So let's go ahead and start with the bar here. We've got a no parking, an alleyway sign, and a door. If we go through that door, it is real. And on the other side, of course, is the interior that you can walk inside of. Interestingly enough, I can't actually hit the teddy bears, but I don't think I can interact with... Oh, I can! Okay, never mind, I'm wrong. Yeah, so normally when you don't open the doors to a building, you can't interact with any of the interactable stuff, right? So you wouldn't be able to normally buy any perks or wall buys. But it seems like that's not the case for this area, so that's kind of cool to see. And going towards the back here, we got a window that looks like it's a bathroom kind of deal. Oh my god, that's pretty creepy. Yeah, inside the bathroom, uh, not much. Oh my god, there's actually a massive area back here, though. Yeah, so this area that we saw through the wall is just some kind of alleyway, right, between the buildings. Yeah, and it continues all the way through between these buildings all the way to here. So that's that's what's back here. And the art in this place is so weird. Like, what? Like, who lived in this town, man? What the hell is going on? Is that a butt? I think that's a butt. Upstairs, there's another window right here, which has a very detailed room, actually. Uh, these paintings are in other places, so there's nothing too crazy going on with those. And it doesn't really look like there's anything hidden inside of this area, just, you know, just a whole bunch of props. I mean, it's very well modeled, to be honest with you. And then back here, there's this door, which, uh, well, it actually has another door that leads to nowhere, so that's kind of funny. If we no-clip through this door, uh, we can see that we're actually on the roof, which, of course, has a barrier on it, so we can't stand. But on the other side, it does actually have a door texture. Interesting that on the inside, it doesn't. And then something else that's actually quite noticeable as well. If you look up through this crack, you can see there's more building up here that's modeled. So let's go ahead and go on up and see what's going on. So first of all, there's the roof. Obviously, no textured ceiling. But this little building, there's no textured floor, but there is textured ceiling and textured walls. Yeah, interestingly enough, this building does have a lot of, like, partially modeled walls and, like, windows that you can see, textures that you can see from the inside. Uh, there's this window, obviously, right, that would have connected the two buildings. But yeah, there's not a ton going on with it, man. I guess that would just be, like, the motel part of the motel and bar situation going on here. Now, past the old bar area, we have the bowling alley right here. Normally, you can't get in this building at all, which I always thought was really unfortunate. I felt like town would have done much better if there was, like, a way to get in some buildings here to be able to, you know, kind of connect, right? Like, in this corner, you can go in that building, you can go in that building, in that corner, you can go in this building, in this corner. It kind of felt like the fourth corner didn't have a building, you know? Which would have been nice. But going inside of it... Here we are, we're inside the laundromat portion of it, and, uh, I mean, it's a laundromat. Yeah, there isn't really anything too interesting in here. Everything does have collision, though, right? Other than this rubble that's that's put in right here. It does feel like an area that you would have been able to walk in, at least to some extent, right? This door, I mean, it could have been a door. And then through these two right here, we can go inside the bowling alley. And look at this, man. This is a massive interior that's very well modeled, too. The actual lanes themselves, they don't really lead anywhere. There's just like a little box here. There's no there's no thing to pick up the pins or anything like that that's modeled. But behind this, there is some space here, actually quite a bit, which is interesting to see. Of course, there's these two doors on each side, so there needs to be some kind of space there to, to have that illusion of depth. And to the left over here, there's this little room, which I guess is kind of like the room that you would pick up your shoes, your bowling shoes, right? Your bowling ball and stuff. Uh, but yeah, there's just a really dark room uh, with, with nothing in it, unfortunately, right? I guess zombies spawn in there? I don't, I don't actually know. 
I suppose it could have been a zombie spawn location, at least, if this was a playable area, but unfortunately, it never came to be, did it? Now, we know it's beyond that door. That's the laundry map, but what about this door right here? Does this door lead anywhere? And it does! It actually leads to the back alley right here, and that would have connected perfectly. Now, I'm assuming this door would probably be the door that no one would want to open, right? Because this is kind of the camp location of the map, if you have some buddies and you're trying to protect yourself with the box. I mean, if that door was openable, this box location would be so hard to actually get a box mid-round. But that would have connected perfectly, man. This door connecting through the through the bowling alley, an area right here that we could we could play in. It just would have worked so perfectly. Really makes me wonder why they cut this area, or if they did cut it, I suppose. I mean, it seems like something that they were planning on doing, and it just never happened. But there does seem to be quite a bit more in this building than just the, the inside area there. So there's these upstairs areas, like this one right here. Just a bunch of rubble. And the same kind of deal uh, for the bowling alley itself, right? So you can see into some areas here, and what that looks like up top is just, well, I mean, downward, there's no texture. But this is what these little rooms look like. And then interestingly enough, the roof of this building has no texture to it whatsoever. But I guess you never really get to see that, huh? You kind of just have the impression looking up at it that there is something there. And then out back here in the alleyway, there's this area up here. So this is like kind of like a broken area of the building. Interesting that there's some modeled floor there. Usually that isn't the case. And then there's this building too which is also partially modeled on the interior, but, you know, mostly not at all. And for this building over here, we no clip on inside, it seems quite a bit less modeled than the one across the street. And beyond it, there's this building right here, which is just complete darkness. And for up by Jug, there is a window up here. So let's go ahead and just hop on in and check it out. Uh, but yeah, not much. There's a staircase. Interestingly enough, but it leads to nowhere here. Yeah, if they if they wanted to, man, they really could have extended this and made this whole building something that was accessible. And over here in this corner, we got this charred window, uh, which also has a staircase, interestingly enough. Kind of strange. It seems like it would have led down to, like, the bottom floor of this building here that you can't normally get into, right? Yeah, so this is like the barbershop, right? This is a window... Uh, where zombies can spawn and go out and try and get you inside the map. But there's not really any detail in here, though. You know, just just a barbershop. That's about it. Yeah, so there's the barbershop right here. And obviously, this is the stairs that you normally go up to go to get inside of Jug. Uh, but I want to check out this rooftop right to our right, if I can. Is there a barrier here? Yeah, it seems like there is a barrier. I can't walk in here at all. But just to take a little bit of a better look, there is some modeling to it, right? There's, like, couches and stuff like that. But that's about it. Yeah, it's crazy how high the barriers are on these buildings, man. Look at this. So I can just hop whoop, over to this one here. <laughs> kind of cool, but crazy how high they are. I, I don't I don't get why they got to be this high, but they really didn't want any glitches here, I guess. And as far as the downstairs area of this little building right here, there is some modeling to it. So if we just slip on through, we can take a look. So we have these, like, windows here. Right, they're like shop windows, and inside there's just a whole bunch of trash and some like bookshelves and stuff. I don't think we can even break these windows. No, none of it's none of it's destructible, but it is here. And the actual interior of the building is just darkness. So I'm looking out because you can't see anything inward. All right, time to check out the bank. Let's open these doors. Let's rob this joint. Back here on the right, there's a window. Let's check it out first. Is there anything going on that's interesting? Oh my god. Yeah, so there's a lot of modeling here actually, and interestingly enough, you can even see a panel here uh, of the Pack-a-Punch area down below. So that's kind of cool to see. But yeah, this is a massive room, and it leads also to this window here on the side of the bank. Right, so the zombies can path on through and, and get to you either whether you're inside the bank or outside. And I'm guessing they just spawn back here, probably, for either direction. Now, if we go through the vault door with no clip, I think everything will be mostly the same. We can't interact with the bank, though, so none of the interactables exist yet. Uh, there is this window right here I want to check out, so let's go ahead and go on outside. Uh, this is like a massive alleyway area. And there's a lot of modeling here, actually. Like, a lot, a lot of modeling here. This looks quite good. It really makes me wish that there was more to this town area, man. This could have been sick. So yeah, over here to the right, we got this broken building here. Uh, it has this going on for its downstairs section, and its upstairs section looks like this. There's not much interesting going on in it, though. And for this building, it actually does have an entirely modeled interior, like almost 100% modeled. It's just a bunch of debris inside, but you can see all of it, which I guess makes sense. I mean, I suppose from inside the map, right? What is this? Forest Cafe. 
Yeah, from inside the map, you can see into the Forest Cafe. Uh, although, I mean, not very well, but kind of cool to see that it is all indeed structured for the most part. And around the corner right here, there's a little room which has nothing in it whatsoever. It's just an empty room that has no purpose of being here. It might be an area for zombies to spawn so that they can come around and hop over the fence somewhere. I actually don't know where they hop over here. And now, let's check out the upstairs of the bank. I don't know what to expect, to be honest with you. It looks like there's not much here at all, right? So I can't walk around because this is an entire just massive barrier here, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, there's not really much modeling to it. So these windows, they didn't really do any depth tricks. It's literally just... As you can see here, we can see down to the bank, uh, but there's just like a little bit of space and then a black wall. There's no, there's no textures there, just darkness, like my soul. So going further into the bank here, let's go ahead and no clip through this door and then no clip through this one. Interestingly enough, there is a little room here, but this is the floor that drops out beneath you normally, right? Or it slides away or something. I think it slides, right? It's got rollers, it probably slides. And we can access the stairs below here leading down to to pack a punch. It's got a few windows like this one right here, so let's go ahead and hop on in and take a look. Uh, it looks very, I mean, it's it's very Pentagon-esque, I'm not gonna lie. At the back here, we got like a garage door uh, with a whole bunch of these, these radiation, <laughs> these radioactive material boxes just chilling. So there's this window right here, so let's go ahead and check it out, hop on in. Uh, I guess there's like a little spawn area for zombies over here to the left, and I guess kind of to the right as well, actually. As for this garage here, uh, there's not much going on with it. Uh, just to check. It leads nowhere. There's no modeling on the other side. And continuing onward, we got a few more windows. So there's this one right here. Uh, it's a much smaller area, though. Just a little area for people to spawn. Uh, part of a, like a forklift deal. One of those, those things you see at Walmart. And past that one, another window. Yet again, here... This area right here is is quite the atmosphere. I'm, it's 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 kind of insane. It might be because of all the blood. I think it's mostly because of the lighting, but this area is just really creepy, dude. Yeah, nice little zombie spawn location right here, and that's about it to this room. Just some really creepy lighting that's flickering on and off. And finally, at the end, we got this room right here, which looks absolutely massive as well. Over here to the right, it's a little spawn location. It seems like. With, a, with like a red spotlight coming down, just, again, adding that creepy atmosphere to this room. And then we have this back here, which is, again, leading to nowhere. But what is that? Yeah, so there's always some things that load through walls, right? So we can see, like, pack-a-punch parts, for instance. We can see the boards that we can rebuild. But we also see this cage right here, which is really strange, right? It's just one of these cages... Only one of them. I don't know. I don't know why, but you can see that through the wall. Apparently, I usually it's because you can interact with the thing is why you can see it for the most part, right? It's these parts and the windows. But for some reason, that crate right there you can also see. Kind of strange. And here's a nice look at town from the top. This is something at least that I'm interested in. I don't know about you guys, but it looks really cool. I mean, there's a lot of areas that I feel like, ah oh man, they could have just like like why no bowling alley, you know? They could have added a little bit more, like been able to walk through the alleyways too, would have been sick. Now before we move onward, I just kind of want to check out where this direction leads. So at this four-way intersection, it is the only way that doesn't actually lead into the map, right? So this leads out of the map and instead just kind of to a wall here that has nothing on the other side. Uh, but if it did lead somewhere, it would go all the way through to Noct and towards the nav table. And oh my god, would that have been nice, right? Like, if there was a street that just went all the way through into this cornfield, which I guess would have made no sense considering there's a cornfield here. But man, would it have been nice being able to get back to the nav table so easily, right? And do that Easter egg? Oh god. Now, we already kind of saw this area, but it's really interesting out back here how this works. So, they kind of just made this really bad looking wall <laughs> that surrounds the entirety of town here and kind of separates the area from back where the cornfield is and where farm is over there. I don't know why they did this. I guess, again, limited on time and resources. But there's also this pathway right here, which I don't think I can walk on. Nope. Yeah, it's got no collision, but it does look like a road, which begs the question, was this going to be a road at one point, or did they think to make this a road? Obviously, right? So if we go over here where the actual road is, right, it's broken up and it's destroyed, but it does continue along the backside of the building, 
and over here to the right, that does continue all the way around the building until right about here, where they seem to, like, cover it up and put a, put a tree up instead. It kind of makes me think that the bus might have, at one point, been able to take a right turn here, or, well, at least maybe planned to been able to take a right turn here and go around the building instead. Or perhaps instead of around the building, it could have gone right through this mountain and connected back to the road right here. Again, bus route B. Obviously, bus route B is something that is clearly not finished <laughs> in this map. Uh, there seems to be no real alternative route for the bus to have taken, but it would have been really cool if it did, I'll tell you that much. So yeah, maybe this could have been part of bus route B, maybe not, who knows. It's complete hysteria at this point. Alright, goodbye town. Time to hop some more lava. Hot 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 Woo! So there goes the bridge, and it breaks, it seems, no matter what, right? The second you touch it. And here's what it looks like. Below it, just a big old lava pool, which you just glitch right through. So yeah, no collision down here whatsoever, but this is what this area looks like. Kinda cool, man. And as far as the area around the bridge, it actually looks the most finished, I think, of all of the areas outside transit. This whole wall has a bunch of detail in it with the rocks and stuff like that, and same over here, too. Well, I guess except for up there, you know? Alright, well, continuing onward past the bridge, got a whole bunch of open space, which, oh my god, does this look different without fog. And there we go. We made it all the way around, man. A little interesting detail about the bus terminal, too. Once you turn on the power, you get voiceovers like that that just randomly go on. I'm sure people who have played tons of time on transit, you know that yourself, but I just thought that was kind of something to point out. There's also a few things here we never did, right? So we didn't check out this shelter, for instance, so let's go ahead and hop on through and see what's going on. Does it actually lead anywhere? And no, it does not. Just a staircase down to nowhere, but kind of cool, right? A place for zombies to spawn and come up at you. Obviously, that, that sheltering did not work very well, did it? And then as far as this little hole in the wall, just to see... Uh, yeah, there's not really much going on. Obviously, it was supposed to be a bathroom, once upon a time, uh, but through this door, leads, actually, right to here, so, yeah, it's, I guess, one's male, one female? Thank you guys for making it this far in the video, you're an absolute legend for having done so, and please let me know down in the comment section just how much of a legend you are. But I hope you guys enjoyed, man, here is Transit, and of course, leave a like on the video if you did, it helps me out a ton, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.